So a little follow up. Uh, I had some problems with uh, cutting this material I cast and by closer inspection I realized that there's actually a line and it seems that I didn't mix up the aluminium bronze right with uh, when alloying materials with a, a bigger density difference or greater di density difference you want to mix them up really good um, otherwise they don't mix completely and then you have a small layer of light material floating on top it will pour out first and I cast this part um, first and then the artwork stuff so now I have basically um, two alloys and one is extremely hard and not so nice to machine. I wanted it to be something between. Uh, the the other part is quite nice and you can kind of see it, I hope. And this artificial lining it's it's not that clear but the let me see. Oh yeah. The upper the upper part now is more silvery and the lower part is more golden. And uh Yeah, it's not that um, nice of a material and it's also uh, quite brittle. I um, realized when I hexawed the a spur um, that the last part broke easy and it's an extreme coarse grain structure there so I think it will just remelt that. Let's show you uh, one of the tools I so this is just um, cheap high-speed steel and um, it immediately destroyed the edge when I tried to cut this. I thought it was okay, some sand in the, in the scale or something, so I uh, went for the 5% cobalt stuff. This is a back of a form tool I ground, oh, other way around. So this is 5% cobalt. Uh, 60 degree form and uh, I used the back of it and even that got destroyed by the attempt of cutting that material and I think what happened here is let's zoom on that I've uh, printed out some stuff this is uh, some uh, paper on aluminium copper alloys from the German Copper Institute and uh, you can see the well, I hope you can see it the diagram let's focus on that, on that a little more you have the percentage aluminium percentage and the temperature and you see that we have uh, in this region a mixture of um, an alpha and a gamma phase but that, that's only if you cool it down infinitely slow. So in reality you have more like a mixture of that beta, the alpha beta and a little bit of gamma uh, when you cool it at normal speeds. It depends on the cooling speed. So what I think happened here is I'm way in that region where I have a lot of that hard gamma and beta and not much of the alpha that kind of works like uh, cement. So this is hard, brittle and basically unusable and unmachinable. So um, I want it to be somewhere here with a little bit of gamma and better to um, aid the machinability to make it a little more brittle, a little more not gummy but um, at least the aluminium which part that I didn't mix in overshoot here and uh, turned into an unusable mess. So when you um, mix that alloy, make sure to stir it a little more than uh, you would think required and um, maybe use a little thicker rod. I only had a really thin stainless steel wire and it probably didn't cause enough uh, turbulence.
So that's the update on that. And um, yeah, that was basically it. I will recast that and um, I don't think that I have to show that, but uh, I will show the machining when I'm uh, getting to it. So here's the next page and here's an interesting diagram that shows how you can change the behavior of the material by adding nickel and iron. And that's a, a little hint um, to an upcoming video on a little more complex alloy. So I hope I see you then and uh, thanks for watching.